Welcome back to Access All Areas. Damien Barrett and I joined by Dr Peter Larkins. Good morning to you, Doc. Morning, Damo. Good morning, Das. We're talking Buddy Franklin again, Doc. He was down at Amy Stadium today. He told AFL.com.au no scan, but he wanted through the imaging department. Is he yeah. telling the truth, Doc? Well, I'm not sure. I wasn't there. All the speculation of whether he played. He turned up and played yesterday. He played 40%. 47% right. of the game, kicked four goals, but uh, got a cork in the buttock. Now, the question is, if it's on the same side, there'll be some bruising and bleeding there. His doctor is based down there, so he may well have been seeing the doctor and may not have been telling a lie that he had a scan, but uh, he looked to be moving pretty comfortably. We know his recovery capacity is fantastic, buddy, so I'm tipping he'll be right to play. Sean Higgins from the, the Bulldogs, Doc. What's he got out of the weekend? He's so important. He's been injury prone. A bad uh, hit on the right side of his calf, which uh, this is late in the game, uh, Damo, and he gets actually a, a boot, comes across and just clips him, but he actually bled up into the calf and he got sore over the fibula. You can see him pointing to the outside there, so they'll be looking at him back in Melbourne this week to see. Often those core calves turn out to be pretty sore and they end up missing a game, so Higgins will have to wait and see if he comes up. Go back to Friday night if we can, Doc, and uh, look at the incident involving Cade Simpson again. Um, Concussion's been in the news all year, as you know, and here we just see Wellingham coming in the contest. Just the two things to look at. Look at his arm reaction and, and the, the reflex. He's trying to sit up, but his brain's actually lights out at that stage, even with the eyes open. He does get the mouth gut out, which is a great uh, lesson just to get the airway. But just watch, he comes, gets hit in the head, and then he doesn't protect his landing on the way down. He's got a broken jaw out of this demo. He won't have plate and screws put on, but he'll have band fixation, a bit like braces. Kind of miss four, possibly five weeks of footy. OK, now we look at that footage, and, and I know medicos don't like it when non-medicos question what they do. But watching him being taken from the ground the way he was, that didn't sit comfortably to me. Look, it's been mentioned to me a lot. It was a very untidy way that he was off the ground. I mean, they made it the lower clear that he was conscious and able to communicate with them. So, and he didn't have neck pain. So we always often see the brace come out and the stretcher when there's neck pain. Did or you the like player it? Came. Look, I didn't like it because I think we see so often the game stop and the player being protected. That was quite near the play. So Carlton were quite adamant that he was safe to walk off the ground, albeit with the Riddick bows. But uh, they weren't worried about the neck. And I guess that was the thing that sort of made me feel that uh, they, they knew what they were doing. Sean Hampson, uh, Doc, uh, in for surgery as of for this morning, we believe. Is he out for the year? Look, they've said he's, the right knee is the one. The PCL round 13 last year, he ruptured. Here he collides with, uh, um, with uh, Dane Swan and aggravates the, the PCL again. But he's also developed swelling in the knee. They're arthroscoping him this afternoon on the Monday afternoon. But they've already said the rest of the year he'll, he'll be out. He's going to miss six weeks because of the jarred knee. And you see the absolute contact. The old Ruckman's injury does, as you know. But uh, with six weeks out, take him into round run 21-22, they don't believe he'll be fit to play finals if they're in it. So they've said year out, even though they're not sure what the scope's going to show this afternoon. A couple more to look at from that same game. Dale Thomas, first of all, here in the uh, late in the game. Yeah, again, the right ankle. He goes to kick the ball. Actually, he has a missed kick, and you'll see Digan come across, and you'll just see it again on the replay. The whole medial side, the opposite to the side of the normal ankle sprain, Damo. So you see the side of the foot open up, and he was pretty sore in a moon boot yesterday, which, again, is professional treatment for a lot of the clubs that they will do. But you see the medial side stretch open. Now, they're very sore for weeks, usually. So whilst they say he hasn't torn anything, and it's just a contusion or stretch-type injury, uh, I don't think he'll train much early this early part of the week, and he could be in some doubt. Tell us about Marley Williams, uh, Doc, shoulder popped out uh, on the weekend. Young first-year player, two dislocations in the same game. My point is to ask that usually with a young player like that, you see it come out when he's just trying to make the contest. It means it's pretty loose. He, he's crated in the arm there. And I mentioned Nathan Fife, where it just comes out easily. They put him away. So, again, for surgery with the Fife example, I think Williams and Colin will have the discussion today, but it wouldn't surprise me if you see them stabilise him, get him right for next year, because that can happen so, so many times. I don't want that. Doc, any more news on Michael Hurley? We're at the game Saturday night. He got his hamstring rubbed uh, at the start of the game. Yep. Didn't look comfortable at any stage. Ended up going off with a, a slight tear, is that yeah, right? Yeah, to make the point that this is his opposite hamstring, he's had two right side strains this year. This is the left side. He's had a little tear. In the third quarter, he felt an incident when it went. So whilst he'd been tied prior to the game, treated first quarter, quarter time, he was definitely sore and then it went. So he'll miss three, I reckon, as a minimum. Having scans today to confirm what the degree of damage is. But with that second incident in, in the third quarter where he felt something go and then he was subbed out of the game, I'm expecting Hurley to miss three, which will be... The opposite hamstring, but still not good for him with his history. Doc, I want to talk about a couple of Adelaide big men who both copped uh, head knocks on the weekend. We'll start with Sean McKernan. Have a look at, uh, at what happened here. Yeah, we well, see the, the, ice, the ice, ice on the right side of his cheek and jaw. And you see the incident there where, where uh, they come in and it's just the contact with the side of the face. And it doesn't look a lot, does it? But he's actually got multiple fractures in the mandible jaw and the maxilla, which is just underneath the eye socket. So he won't require surgery. It's all in position. But that's often a six-week. Yep, so McKernan has been really trying to get himself going and been not too bad. That's six weeks out with that uh, fractured uh, jaw and maxilla bone. And Kurt Tippett 
for the again. second time in three weeks. A concussion. Second time in three weeks. Uh, look, a minor episode, but he got delayed symptoms, and the doctors were all over this. And he developed uh, symptoms as the game went on. Of not being, his memory went. He was unaware why he was off the ground. So clearly, with AFL rules, you just cannot put people back on the ground. Well, you, you can't. But there is still some confusion. Uh, Adelaide Footy Club uh, operations, uh, footy boss operations of uh, football, Phil Harper, had this to say on SEN this morning, just about the confusion as to whether a player can or can't come back on. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll be guided by our medical guys, but I think two in three weeks, you know, their suggestion might be he has a week off this week and, and you know, gets ready for the following week. But but whatever they say we'll do, uh, you know, it was an interesting thing on the weekend where, you know, we, we, uh, you know by half time Kurt was feeling a bit better and, and, you know, wanted to go back out and play and the doctors were saying no, but... It would be interesting. We had a good discussion, a philosophical discussion in the box as to, well, what if it was a grand final? We're down to 17 guys and he wants to go on. What do we do sort of thing? So it's interesting and I don't know what the answer is. And, uh, you know, do you get fined if you do that or is it just the club becomes liable, you know, if, you know, if he gets injured again or something? I'm not sure. So we'll ask that question this week. Well, I tell you what the answer is. The AFL rules are you do not back on the go on, on the game again, no matter how good you are in the third it's or fourth quarter. It's a valid point, though, isn't it, Doc? The it is, when the stakes like, are the, highest, the decisions the, the, could the, be the, made. Yeah, we're talking about the brain. I mean, the stakes are high. Is that what you mean? Or you mm. mean at the game? I think you mean the game. I'm talking about the brain. We've had such an emphasis on long-term effects of concussion. We have recently. I don't reckon we have in the past. And I, I reckon know, it's still the, a carryover from the past. Yeah, but we're not going to go away from what we've decided the last few months, and that is that the brain is sacrosanct, to use that terrible word. Mm. And, and equally, if the AFL rules say that concussion in the first two minutes, whether it's Chris Judd, whether it's Kirk Tippett, whether it's Buddy Franklin, the doctors have the answer. Phil said that. And if we're going to respect the brain and not be looking at medical legal cases in the future, woe behold any footy manager, and Phil won't override the doctor. They won't put him back on. I mean, the AFL rules are very clear. I, don't, I couldn't see why they would go against the medical advice. I think Phil Harper needs a concussion test himself after that one this no, morning. Phil, Phil will uh, do the right thing, no He question. will. Uh, they're just throwing one out there, but uh, we know that but it is tough. Concuss- it's you can't concuss- It's the pressure on doctors, It's as simple as that, though, mate. It's the pre- well, it is as simple as that, but clearly it has happened in the past. Us. Clearly, yeah, but, we, but don't, the we, don't we think we're moving ahead with better knowledge? We, we, we we're seem saying, to this year. We're saying, have, on the have we of... not been put, giving respect to concussion? That's what we've been saying in the past. The doctors have been under the pump. Well, I don't think so. we have. OK, well, now we are. And, and the legal cases will backdate, and when they do come, and they will come as they have come every round around the world, they might stop once 2012 started. So but there will be clearly issues. tip at grand final or not, will not go back on the ground. There it is from the Doc. Definitive and clear as always. Nice work, Doc. Thanks, Dars. See you next week. Thank you. And uh, look forward to uh, catching up with Damo on Friday. He's joined, as always, by Lee Matthews to preview Round 16 on Access All Areas. But from us now, it's goodbye.